I want to invest in gated communities to make some money off Airbnb. You guys are pushed to the station for cut out the business. Why go on here so? How come it's only the big fish can eat? What about this? No, no, Sprat. <laughs> me no want to say Sprat. What about the small fish like me? You know? <laughs> me need piece of the pie too. One of a gold medal for me, no. Champion boy, no, the damn thing, no. One of a gold medal for me, no. Tell me, no. My YouTube family, before I even get into the video, I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you for your views, your likes, your share, and your subscription. People, I've now reached over 10,000 subscribers, and I want to say big up to Juliet Holness because. Mrs. Holness, if it wasn't for me touching your button, I would not have reached over 10,000 subscribers. And I want to thank you from the heart. And because you have blessed me, my dear sister, as the good book says, to whom much is given, much is required. And because you bless me, I am going to bless you today. As you can see, family, I changed the name of the channel from GBA, Giving Back to Africa, now to officially Jamkan. I've made a commitment within myself that whenever I reach over 10,000 subscribers, I will change it to a name that really suits me. Because, as you know, I was born in Jamaica and I've been in Canada for over 30 something years. So, Jamkan literally fits my geographical disposition. It doesn't mean I am giving up on Africa because you're gonna get a whole lot of videos in Africa. <laughs> so Juliet Holness, Mark Golden argued the point in his budget debate that your husband is a prime minister and you're the speaker of the house and it doesn't look good. However, he's not saying that you should resign. But from my point of view, and from the 70% Jamaican voters who did not partake in the local election, we are saying that it is conflict of interest and you should not be there. It is not because I don't love you. My sister, me love what you do. Me love the fact that you have broken the glass ceiling, you and your predecessor, who became speakers of the house and who are female. So me respect that. The point I am arguing is that it doesn't look good for you being the speaker in the house because it is blatant nepotism and cronyism. Say rock a for me. So, Mrs. Oles, the video that I talked about Edward Warmington, the pit bull, defending the conflict of interest, is not to disparage you or to push a button. Yes, it is also to push a button so you can disrupt your thinking. Because guess what? You have influence. You have position. But what happens now you allowing your environment, St. Catherine way of growing up to keep you in a rich black mentality. I want you in this video to look at this from a different perspective so you can become a part of the 21 plus elite family who run Jamaica. The reason why, Juliet, because guess what? Out of all the 21 plus elite Family in Jamaica. Do you realize there's no black one? <laughs> there's none black. You have Syrians. You have whites. You have Lebanese. You have Chinese. You have Indian. You have Jews. And you have... Who else? <laughs> but in reality, there are no black ones. One of the ways in which Uptown, and particularly the 21 families, keeps their wealth in them is that they don't let it go too far outside of the family. And so Mrs. Oness. 
Jamaica, whether you like it or not, is a modern plantation. The majority of the citizens in Jamaica are black people. And the elites who literally own almost everything in the society are predominantly, as I said, from different ethnicity. There is none black. For you to become successful, you must break rules. You broke the rules by becoming Speaker of the House. But also, for you to become successful, you have to be disruptive. The elite class who are controlled by different ethnicity is not right, it is not fear. You're gonna tell me that over 500 years you cannot find one black elite family in the group? So the political spectrum has become, I would say, a water hole for the black ruling class to build their wealth. In short, they have become what you call the new bourgeois. And the new bourgeois, what they're doing, they're not really building up the country for all black people. What they're doing is enriching themselves and creating a whole lot of peasants. And quite frankly, with a population of 2.8 million people, we should not have so many peasants. But what I have realized is that they don't want to change. I'm not talking about wealth redistribution. I am talking about making the environment more, I would say, equitable for everybody to eat a piece of the pie. You get the gist? Yeah. Me love pie. I'm want to eat a piece. <laughs> J.P. Morgan said, he said, I rather have 1% of 100 people than 100% of one man. Look at all the elites in Jamaica. Look at the elites around the world. They don't waste their time. Their time is very valuable. They create a system like a McDonald's, a turnkey system, that wherever they are in the world, they're still making money. They have multiple income streams. Now look at your position now. You have the influence, you have the position, and you have the branding that you can sit back and put all the mechanisms in place that you just get passive income. Now, I know you run a business, and I understand that. But think about being the Speaker of the House. Yes, it looks good. Yeah, you're Speaker of the House, and you laugh, and so forth. But is that creating wealth? Or is it tying you down and wasting your time? For instance, my wife and I are hardworking. And sometimes we're so tired that when we get around each other, we become like Ray Charles. I am touching her and she touching me. Because guess what? We're so tired. The mind is willing to bust a move and sort the thing out. <laughs> but guess what? The flesh is weak. And because I am using so much of my time to generate capital, I have not created enough passive income stream that, that I can enjoy my life while I'm still getting paid. So this is why I'm making this video to kind of push you to look at the things from a different perspective. Because as I said, look at the elites. You will never find Leach in running NCB. He might step in when there's a situation, but he hired a president. If you look at the Matalons, the Issas, the Azans, they have managers to run their operation and they fly around in, in corporate jets and go to their villas. But money is being made. But you guys have a mindset to believe that the political space is all and end all. It is madness. It take up your time. It's inefficient. It's too much cronyism. And it makes the population dislike and mistrust all of you. <laughs> if there is no, no Dennis Meadows, there is no vote, there is no PNP, there is no Trelawney seat for PNP. Think about that, Mrs. Holness. As I said before, time is your greatest asset. Were you in Parliament, I lick down Gavlfa. Your husband tired, you tired. 
He has to deal with the executive problems of arguing with opposition every day, so mentally burnt out. You don't do an arguing parliament, I don't gavel. The Minister of Finance, in terms of shut your mouth and let me talk. I know you would have a problem with that. I know you would have a problem with that. I know you would have a problem with that. Think about how much time you guys are wasting trying to deal with the political system. So here's my suggestion from, I would say, a self appointed financial advisor. Mrs. Hollis, you run a business, I understand that. Now you can hire competent people to operate the business, but here's a good thing. Because you have a foot in parliament, you will know every, uh, every contract that's coming across the prime minister's dex. Yes, me no corruption. Yes, me no cronism. But guess what? Even the great American political leaders that invest in companies like GE and Raytheon, that's why there's so many wars, because these political elites get rich. All I am saying, steal, but build a place. The problem with many of you Jamaican leaders, you steal, but you're not building. So after independence, water still a go off, light a still a go off, pot was still in a road, and people are still getting shot down like birds. The place now a bill. So that's why the 70% they're mad, and that's include me. When I run politics for the 29%, I just want to be when I run for the look hungry belly one of them. You know, Tiger said what? No one got God, no one got belly. But that create a pressure in the environment and the society that can create a revolution at any time because the majority are sitting like a sleeping giant and they will go off the other side Juliet wholeness this is about building wealth they're not paying off Philip don't gavel a waste of time that no say for instance NCB wants to buy Sajik Ho. Remember that you and your husband know the whole of that story before anybody else knows it. And the elites also know it. That is why the elites have so many family members in parliament. So any business come there, grab it first. There's nothing for the small man. So if NCB put in a bid for Sajik Ho or vice versa, all you do because you have links in the banks and big credit, you go borrow 200 million and you buy the Sajiko stock way ahead before time. Or you find a way to work your company to buy the stock. By the time they merge, your profit go up about three, four hundred percent. What you in parliament are doing? There's a whole lot of money to be made away from parliament. You have a construction company. How many gated communities you are building or how many properties you own in gated community that you can Airbnb? Although you guys are pushing legislation to kill the Airbnb in gated communities. And I know it's not really the average man, although you guys are using the argument that people say strangers are coming in the communities. You guys know the only reason why you're killing the Airbnb business in gated communities because the, the big hotel owners are losing market share and they want the money. So basically you guys are gatekeepers for the elites. And anything the elite say you to do, you have to do it. I want to invest in gated communities to make some money off Airbnb. You guys are pushed to the streets and cut out the business. Why go on there so? How come it's only the big fish can eat? What about this? No, no sprat. <laughs> me no want to sprat. What about the small fish like me? You know? <laughs> me need a piece of the pie too. But you're really going to set up and set up for the big guy and sell off all the beach and sell it to the big guy. What about us? Eh? We don't need a piece of the pie too. <laughs> you're in parliament, you're burnt out. Your husband is the prime minister, he's burnt out. That can lead that door open for Joe G R I N D. And that can leave a door open for Meaty. You know Meaty? like Mitty, Monica Lewinsky with Bill Clinton. 
So what happens? You guys are so busy that you're not spending quality time. Because guess what? The parliamentary system is like an aphrodisiac. It gives you a clout. But women of great wealth, they don't need that. And Juliet Horners, I have just said to you that your company can get a lot more contracts. It can build gated communities. You can own property and say, tell you, I want to build that estate for myself. Find another way to kind of design that so money flows, meaning that you're creating what you call generational wealth. Now, this part, I want you to think about it seriously. As I've said before, and I've critiqued you not be able to maneuver pumps the way you should. It's not a diss. In politics, my enemy, my enemy is my friend. So you and I are friends. Because guess what? You see, because you bust me and big me up, may I try to bust you and big you up too. And when you become wealthier, you know, say, me love spillover. Me love wool up a grave. I say, me corrupt to the hell. But me want to do it in the right way. You get the gist? <laughs> Wait, me never take me meds this morning, you know that, so, you know, have some mercy upon me, all right? And as you can see, me just like leeching today, while well, I look rich. So guess what? Because of that now, me gonna need no help. On a don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because guess what? We all want a better Jamaica. And when some of the blagger them will talk about foolishness, me have find solution so we can fix the problem. Because we don't want revolution, as so the thing said. So Mrs. Honus, look at it from a different point of view. Your husband loves to big up clerks. And all the politicians and even Vibes Cartel, when we just do a video pan, love to big up clerks. But does the clerks company has a factory in Jamaica? Think about that. As a government, if you guys force the class company to come and build a class factory in Jamaica so they can promote it in the Western world, it adds value to the economy, you create a value added business so the average Jamaican can get the employment. Street talk, opinions or no, real talk. Think about it from this other point. So you don't want to build a factory. Does Michael Jordan owns a shoe company? No. Michael Jordan and Nike come to some kind of conclusion that Nike will build his shoes, use his brand, and he will get he will get a royalty. No, Michael Jordan is billionaire. Yeah, make we talk the things. So because Clark's has a foothold in the country and Clark's company is a chauvinistic company in Jamaica, meaning that it mostly puts Clark's towards the males and not the females. So therefore, there's a huge market share that has been untapped. Talk to me, people. Yeah, Jam can I lose his mind up in here. <laughs> Think about it. No. If the violence so high in the country and more men are dying than women, then the huge market of women is there untapped. So, Juliet Holness, if you come out of parliament and sign a deal with Clark Shoe Company, that basically you will push the brand in Jamaica, they will give you a royalty. You so much more money I make, sister. As me tell you, say no, sister, me love spillover, share some over, yes, so. Now, look at Kanye West. He signed a deal with Adidas, although he put him foot in a female mouth and lost billions of dollars. You see, you, you get the idea now? So, you can work with clerks to build a company, or if they don't want to work with you now, remember saying, you, know, you can get everything done in China. So, all you have to do is start your own brand and rock it. No. The reason why me I say you oh, no, need to get rid of the crime, it's simple because if the crime subside and drop big time, it whole about everybody rich. Everybody gonna be rich. Even the elites gonna be richer. No. Think about Nayem Bokele down in El Salvador. If Nayem Bokele leaves office tomorrow morning 
and start a shoe company or a clothing company or whatever company. Look how powerful and rich Nyan Bokele will become. Talk to me, people. Oh no, hit the like button, hit the subscription button. Yes, yeah, so I work, me, I work. <laughs> I work, me, I work, me, I give you the ideas. We need to come out of this kind of poor mentality where I run for position. Who need position when there's so much wealth? Jamaica brand is one of the most powerful brands in the world. That's why I changed my name to Jam Can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people, look who trademark Ochorius and Mantico. They are the Chinese them trademark it, you know? Who trademarked Don's River? It's a Chinese trademark it because brand Jamaica is powerful. All the dung they are like gavel at a bull. SHIT in a parliament. One of them can create brand. Shut him out and let me talk. Oh. I know you have a problem with that. People, honestly, what I talk about? Jamaica has a huge trade imbalance. We import more than what we export. And when you do that, you always have to borrow money. You dollar always devaluing and you must always rely on foreign currency. That is madness. When you have such a powerful brand, look at Bob Marley movie lately. I think maybe it might make a ball $500 million. Look at Usain Bolt. Who make most of the money off them? It's the elites who make most of the money. Because when tourists come, the elite make them in the resorts. And anything Bob Marley, quite frankly, it helped the elites more than it helped the average man in the street. But the average man in the street wants to make our money. So what I'm saying to you, me not this your sister, me love you. But you have to learn to disrupt the thinking, this kind of rich black thinking and think of wealthy black. You can create an income stream to your real estate. You can create an income stream to your branding. You can create an income stream by investments. So you can sit back on your nice villa overlooking the ocean and say, yeah, step up in our life, God good. Yeah, you see what I say? <laughs> But we stop work, money up to the time like clock work. Some white color crime like bank work. We didn't buy some money from pants work. Thousand pounds, that's how much my pants work. So, Mr. Solness, they say for anyone to become very successful in business, they ought to find a need and fill it. The biggest need in Jamaica is solving crime. We have a crime rate since 1980 has been spiraling out of control. You guys, your husband has been implementing SOE, SOE that has not been effective. We see Nayan Bokele in El Salvador implement SOE and build prisons and his crime rate has dropped to levels similar to Canada. Jamaica's problem is crime. And if you guys decide to tell you what, the hell with what everybody says or what every organization say, you gonna make crime, low in crime, as your priority. I guarantee you, you guys be richer than what you'll ever imagine. And money will flow in Jamaica like water rolling down the river. Yeah. And by doing that, anything you touch would turn to gold. And me would get some because me love gold because me a gold digger too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Mrs. Holness, so the video I made about conflict of interest is not to diss you, my sister. It's to embrace you. It's to force you to look at the things from a different perspective is for you to disrupt the thinking. As I've said before, we are on a modern plantation.
And whether you like it or not, although you guys are politicians, you're just gatekeepers for the elites. Because what the elites don't like, you cannot implement it. And because you're protecting your interests, you don't want to rock the boat. But how long is this going to go for? So for me making this video is not to disparage you, it's to lift you up. It's not to say you're not supposed to be the Speaker of the House. I want you to look at bigger things. There's a lot of money to be made if you have the right links and the right connections and you guys have both. So why don't you force foreign companies to come and invest in Jamaica similar to what Singapore and what El Salvador is doing? Business do not like unstable society. The high crime rate benefits a few because they don't want to change the system. But for the long term, what's the end goal? Eventually, time will go by and this will pass. But what will be your legacy? Do you want your legacies to be tainted with corruption, cronyism, nepotism? No. As Gandhi would say, be the change you want to see. I am throwing stones, not because I hate Jamaica. My viewers and subscribers, I am not doing that. I am throwing stones because I know we can have a better Jamaica for everybody. It's a win-win. The population is only 2.8 million people. There's no reason why Jamaica cannot become the little Singapore. People! Jamkian is out and about. And Mrs. Holness, I love pillovers. So if you have an extra cheddar, remember, I will respectfully accept it. Love you. See you in the next video. Ciao.